Hello, yes, Ken, can you hear me? Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Uh, so I can share slide, right? Yes. <clears throat> okay. So today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, PCOS. So it's going to be a light and easy topic. Yeah, even though it's uh, we're talking about natural way to uh, treat PCOS, but uh, uh, we're going to cover a bit of uh, the conventional treatment as well. So, okay, then let's just start it. Let's start our session now. Oops. Okay. Uh, PCOS, uh, PCOS stands for Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. Okay. Now, so yeah. Okay, what is PCOS? Uh? Okay, um, it's a syndrome consists of many changes, uh, and it, it's not just a disease. In other words, there's a spectrum of. Uh, uh, syndrome or, or character in this polycystic ovarian syndrome and the presentations may change or may differ uh, in certain area or certain races or certain people uh, i will elaborate on that later and as the name mentioned uh, the ovaries may contain many small cysts later i will show you the picture from the ultrasound uh, where we can what we can see from uh, the ultrasound findings and many of these uh, patients have uh, weight issue and uh, especially uh, overweight and obesity and uh, PCOS is, is one of the most common uh, hormonal problems affecting women actually of all the uh, cases that we see now okay so it affects nearly about 10% of all women Okay. And 75% uh, of them, of, of patients coming to see us because of amenorrhea. Amenorrhea means no menses uh, uh, due to PCOS. And up to about 85% of women complaining of uh, as a, probably related to excess androgen, means like, for example, excess uh, facial hair, uh, acne problems are due to PCOS. Now, uh, how do we actually diagnose PCOS? Uh? Actually, uh, there's a lot of, if you go through, uh, you know, the, especially Google, I'm sure you come across a lot of definitions. Uh, uh, there's a lot of disagreement how we come, up, come, come to the diagnosis. Now, of course, there's a consensus from European Society of Human Reproductions and Embryology, as well as American Society of Reproductive Medicine, uh, they agree with the definitions of PCOS, eh? Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. So usually what we do is we take any two of these three criteria uh, for us to diagnose this patient is actually having uh, PCOS. Number one is uh, oligo ovulations or an ovulation means what what does it mean mean the patients doesn't have menses uh, or mens the menses are very irregular uh, because of no ovulations second of course uh, clinical and biochemical signs of excess androgen activity that means that this patient have a lot of uh, uh, signs of uh, too much of uh, androgen in the body like acne uh, skin pigmentations and uh, uh, excessive facial hair and of course last but not least uh, the appearance of the ovaries on ultrasound where we see a lot of small small tiny little cysts yeah uh, which is measuring about two to nine mm millimeter from ultrasound okay uh, don't worry about all these things this is just uh, 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 how we diagnose you um, anyway i'll show you the picture after this so basically, in normal in a normal menstrual cycle, you know, uh, we will have our you know our brain, 
the area we call hypothalamus will, will produce uh, 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 certain kind of hormones, we call it uh, gonadotrophin releasing hormone or short form for uh, GNRH. Yeah? This GNRH will stimulate your uh, uh, organs, we call it uh, pituitary glands in your, in your brain, the anterior pituitary, to produce FSH, follicular stimulating hormones, and luteinizing hormones. These two hormones will act on your uh, ovaries and help the egg to mature, releasing, uh, of course, uh, the most important hormone is estrogen, as well as progesterone. And also, they also do produce of androgen. You must understand, in any, irrespective whether you're female or male, you, we do have the female hormones as well as the male hormones. Of course, in the female, the important hormone will be the estrogens, uh, the estrogens and the progesterone, not so much of androgen. Wonder, okay, that's how we, you know, repeat again the diagram. Okay, now, what happened in PCOS? We believe that, uh, you know, in PCOS, there's something wrong with the brains, uh, you know, the way the brain releasing, uh, stimulating the release of all the FSS in LH. In other words, the frequency of uh, releasing this GNRH is disrupted. What is the reason why? We exactly would know. We, we are not so sure. And because of that, the release of SFH, uh, follicular stimulating hormones, and luteinizing hormones become imbalanced. In other words, we release more of LH, uh, luteinizing hormone, instead of FSH. So there won't be any full stimulation of the ovary. That's why in the ovary, there's a lot of small, small follicles or small immature eggs uh, that cannot be ovulated. Yeah? So this is one of the stigma, one, one of the features uh, in the ultrasound findings of the ovaries in PCOS. So what are the signs and symptoms of PCOS? Well, like I said just now, uh, most of the patients will have a uh, weight issue. Yeah, we measure by body mass index, and we know that ideal will be 18.5 to 24.9. Uh, so, majority of PCOS patients have overweight problem or obesity. Okay, and uh, of course, one of the major factors that always patients come to see us, the gynae, because of irregular or absent menstrual cycle. What do you mean by regular and men, uh, you know, absent menstrual cycle? Uh, that means if your menses, you know, uh, more than 35 days onward still haven't come, or in other words, if you measure in a year, you have less than eight cycle or eight menstrual cycle, that's we call irregular menses, or you have more than four months with no menses. Yep. Sometimes in PCOS patients, they do have menses, but the menstrual cycle or the, the bleeding time, the bleeding is uh, prolonged. Yeah? And most of the time it's scanty. That means every day they have spotting for up to maybe one month, two months, never stop. Or sometimes they do have heavy menses, very heavy flow. Yeah? Also can, can be a feature in patients with PCOS. So, I'm sorry. So this is a common problem with uh, PCOS because of excessive uh, androgen, uh, androgen or, or testosterone, the male hormone in the body in patients with PCOS, right? So they they can have, uh, for example, uh, hirsutism. Yeah? This is called hirsutism. That means excessive. Uh, uh, body hair, uh, especially uh, like moustache and beard in the female, okay? And because of uh, excessive tes testosterone, we, you know, the, the, woman, the patients tend to produce a lot of sebum productions. And this sebum uh, or, or the oil, oil production from skin, and this oil production can, you know, uh, block up and then eventually form, we call uh, acne, okay? 
And because you produce a lot of male hormones, you tend to have male pattern of hair loss. Okay, this is quite uh, uh, common uh, in a patient with PCOS. And sometimes they have, we call it, yeah, skin discolorations, or in medical term, we call acanthosis nigricans. Or they will have excessive skin tag. You know, uh, in PCOS patient, because of the insulin resistance, the insulin is very high, and this insulin tend to stimulate the production of skin tag. Okay, and of course, uh, this uh, all these features varies between uh, races, uh, varies between uh, geography area, and we do find that you know uh, the uh, you know the because for example in certain uh, certain uh, area in the, in the world, especially in places where you know a bit dark skin. Uh, the facial hair problems can be more prominent, yeah, yeah. So, and uh, it's quite commonly seen, commonly seen in in those area. And of course, uh, PCOS patients because of uh, uh, insulin resistance, they are prone to get depressions and anxiety as well, yeah. And uh, and this is another issue that PCOS patients always come to see us because of infertility. And also, uh, recurrent miscarriage. In PC, patient with PCOS, if you are not on treatment, uh, their their risk of having miscarriage is much higher, much higher than normal populations, right? And we know that infertility affects seventy five percent of women that are obese with PCOS. Now, these are the findings that uh, I mentioned just now. You know, this one is a normal. On the left side is the normal ovaries, and you see there's a big black shadow there. This whole thing, this this whole thing is ovary, and this all these are follicles, uh, or in normal terms you call eggs, uh, uh, eggs, uh, right? The mature eggs about two centimeter, yeah. The mature eggs about two centimeter, and then they will ovulate. The ovum, or uh, the ovum will come out. If it's fertilized, there will become a uh, uh, embryo and uh, you know pregnancy will occur. Okay, now in PCOS, when we scan them, we see the ovaries contain a lot of these tiny, little, tiny, small, small follicles, usually arranging around the ovaries, around the ovaries. You know, it's like ring of small cysts, uh, ring of cysts, right? All these follicles are usually between two to you know two to seven or two to eight uh, mm. And they they feel they they just couldn't uh, you know reach maturity, okay. And in other words, the patient just doesn't have any ovulation, okay. And usually, like I mentioned just now, uh, beside the ovary, uh, the ultrasound findings, beside the symptoms, and we also have to look at the uh, lab findings. And as, as I mentioned usually they will have very high testosterone level, right? Uh, this is one of the problem with PCOS patients because of high testosterone level. And of course, uh, you know, PCOS, uh, we know that one of the problems with PCOS, they have very high insulin level. In other words, the insulin, is, the insulin level is very high and the cell fail to respond to this insulin, a term we call insulin resistance that means the cell resists to uh, use up the insulin okay and like i mentioned this now uh, because of the uh, erratic productions of uh, uh, hormones that stimulate our you know uh, production of fss lh the lh luteinizing hormones tend to be increased yeah and because of insulin level uh, insulin level, insulin resistance too high, the SHBG, uh, sex hormone blind, binding globally. This is a protein that binds our sex hormones. This SHBG will become lower. So when the SHBG becomes lower, what happens is that the protein is low, not enough protein to bind our sex hormone in our body. So what happens? There will be more free sex hormone that floating around. Now, 
our sex hormone in our body that is functioning is the free sex hormone. So when this free sex hormone is floating around, then they will exert more effect. So when the patients have a decreased SSPG, the free sex hormone, especially testosterone level, will be floating around very high in the circulation. And this is the one that causing a lot of problems. Yeah, the acne problem, the facial hair problems, the hair loss problem. And also, this testosterone will in further interfere with the uh, uh, abil ability to ovulate. And because of that, this patient also, uh, because of insulin resistant, right? Insulin resistant, these patients also tend to have abnormal lipid profile. In other words, usually they are, uh, uh, what do you call it, the bad cholesterol are very high, especially the LDL, uh, the TG will increase. Yeah? And when this, this abnormal lipid profile is not checked, yeah, they can lead to one of the uh, main uh, problem with, uh, we call it non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver. Yeah? That means the too much of fat uh, inside your liver. And if this problem prolongs, they, they are prone to disrupt the liver functions. And this is one of the reasons why abnormal lipid profile, patients with PCOS also prone to get heart disease and hypertension. Right. So what causes PCOS? Now the exact, I repeat again, the exact reason why it happened, we are not so sure. There's still a lot of argument is why it happened to somebody, why it had not happened to somebody, right? But of course we believe maybe there is some, uh, you know, genetic component there, right? Okay. And some even suggest that, you know, in PCOS, there may be some missing gene that's, you know, that trigger the, the, the higher production of androgen and insulin, right? And we also know that sometimes uh, some, some factors that you know, contribute more to development of PCOS, like stress, yeah? Because when you have a lot of stress, you cannot process the cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone, sir. You cannot pro process cortisol hormone effectively. And also you cannot use the cortisol level, cortisol in your body effectively. And actually stress, uh, you know, yeah, stress means when you have a lot of high cortisol level, yeah, actually it can stimulate a lot of other diseases, right? If you look at this whole risk here, right? So that's why stress management is one of the very important components uh, when you want to treat your PCOS. Okay. So like I mentioned again, so, you know, when a woman under stress, uh, you know, the, one of the hormones we call prolactin also can be released. And this, this prolactin will further, further interfere uh, with your ability of the ovaries to produce, uh, to ovulate and produce right balance of hormones. So if you look at this uh, PCOS, you know, all the factors are in play, right? It means everything linked to each other. For example, just so we know that, uh, you know, uh, the, the main problem is testosterone is too high and also because of obesity. But we also know that when a patient is obese, the visceral fat in the body actually will convert, will convert more of this uh, estrogen in the body to testosterone. And this testosterone, when you increase, testosterone increase will make the insulin resistance even worse and make your metabolism even worse. In other words, when you have testosterone very high in your body, you eventually will produce more fat. When you have more fat, you convert even more estrogen to testosterone. You see, it's like a vicious cycle. You just continue to play again and again, again and again. It's, it's like one problem leads to another problem, and this problem will lead to more problems. Like I mentioned just now, other risk problems that we, other, uh, you know, diseases that we are worried associated with PCOS is like diabetes, heart disease, and hypertension. This, especially in women, you know, when they reach certain age, like 40 onward, they were very high risk of developing these problems. So that's why in PCOS, it's a lifelong condition, it's a lifelong situations. We need to monitor this patient 
from the very, because this disease can begin at a very early age. Even some people believe by the time you reach your monarchy, that means your first menses, you can develop PCOS until all the way, you know, just before your menopause, you can have this problem, okay? And also, in patients with PCOS, very, very high homocysteine and uh, CRP level. These two are indicator for inflammation in your body. In other words, uh, patient with PCOS will, ha will have very high homocysteine level and CRP. And if these two conditions, these two levels is not checked, right, the patient will have very high risk in the future to develop heart attack or any uh, chronic uh, diseases, as including disease like um, uh, Alzheimer and things like that. Okay. And we know that because of the irregularity of the hormones, PCOS patients have five-fold increased risk of endometrial cancer. Endometrial cancer, in other words, we call it a uterine cancer, right? And uh, we also believe that, you know, uh, patients with PCOS may have increased risk of ovarian cancer as well. Oh. And because of, uh, you know, uh, the imbalance in hormones, right? Uh, as we know just now, um, you need ovulation to have balance of hormones. And what are the two important hormones in the female body? The estrogen and the progesterone. And when you have ovulations, you produce balance of these two hormones. And the progesterone is one of the hormones that's very, very important in, in, in our body because that hormones will counteract the, whole, the effect of estrogen and protect the woman from getting especially like breast cancer and uterine cancer. So you doesn't have produced enough progesterone, but you still have estrogen. So chronic stimulation of estrogen will increase the risk of getting uh, disease like uh, uterine cancer and breast cancer. Okay. Now, what is the... How do we tackle these uh, PCOS problems? And uh, you know, uh, PCOS is a complex endocrine and metabolic conditions. So you need multi-pronged approach. There is no one magic pills that I can give you and then and tell you, yes, your problem is solved. And uh, you know, and there's no such medication or, or treatment regime that, okay, you take one week, that's it, you know, you don't have to follow up anymore in the future. So as, as you know that, you know, uh, it's, sometimes it's very, very difficult when, when dealing with uh, PCOS patients. Okay. So even though we try to, you know, teach you to use natural method, but some of the medications are very, very, very important uh, to uh, to be used in PCOS patients that we cannot avoid. And uh, number one is metformin. Eh? And metformin is actually is one of the anti-diabetic drug. Uh, if you have a uh, family member with diabetes uh, uh, at home, you realize that they take uh, metformin as well. Okay? Metformin actually is very, very, very effective uh, in uh, treating patient or helping patient with PCOS. Why? Because it, uh, this metformin will improve the insulin resistance, right? And because you make the insulin resistance, uh, you know, uh, make it better, the insulin level will, will, will reduce. Once the insulin level reduce, remember just what we said, once the insulin level reduce, the patient will have increased sex hormone binding globulin, SSBG, and that will lead to lower testosterone, right? When the lower, the testosterone level is lower, so then the problem with hirsutism, acne problems, ovulation problems will improve. So that's why we know that by using metformin, actually we can normalize the menses up to 40%. And from research, if you just treat a PCOS patient with metformin alone, up to 79% of them will become pregnant if they wish to get pregnant, okay? 
Now, then come to uh, oral contraception, uh, oral contraceptive pills. Actually, um, oral contraceptive pills has been used in PCOS for many, 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 many years. And uh, this is used to be the first line of treatment, especially in patients with PCOS uh, who want to have regular menstrual cycle, okay? Uh, and also have a lot of acne problems. So this is, a, we used to use this as the first line of treatment. But as you know, the, the, you know any contraceptive pills, uh, they are synthetic hormones, yeah? Uh, we worry about long-term treatment with this, uh, you know, uh, uh, oral contraceptive contra pills. Uh, so that's why, uh, of course, it's useful for short term. For example, you have no menses or you want to have regular cycle, so that easier for you to, you know, count your cycle, easier for you to plan your schedule, especially you know you go to travel and things like that. Uh, then uh, we use, uh, you know, this Diane Thirty Five, or if you have, you know, you, you, you want to uh, control your uh, excess endogenic problems fast, or the method is you can use this Diane 35. Uh, when we use it, definitely the problem with, uh, you know, acne problems and uh, excessive uh, facial hair uh, will be improved. Of course, uh, uh, like we mentioned just now, Patients with PCOS have different different type of complaint. If the patient come in purely complaining of uh, you know uh, infertility problems, and they wish to get pregnant, then sometimes we can just focus on making helping them to ovulate. Uh, we call it ovulation in uh, inductions. Yeah? Okay, the commonest uh, drug that we use to you know help patient to ovulate is uh, number one, uh, clomiphene. Okay, this is a common drug that we use uh, to help patients to ovulate. Now, a lot of time we combine this ovulation induction with metformin. Yeah, a lot of time, uh, and we know that from research by using these combinations of uh, you know uh, uh, treatment, uh, ovulation inductions, metformin, and also lifestyle changes, usually that alone will sufficient to help patient to get pregnant. Okay, now, as you know that uh, number one issue that uh, usually PCOS patients face is uh, weight issue, right? We know that just by losing your weight, you will significantly reduce the insulin level and uh, subsequently, uh, you know, uh, reducing your androgen level, like just uh, like what? Uh, like I mentioned just now, right? Okay. Now, uh, we know that uh, if you can, for maintenance, uh, you can reduce your daily intake of 1,200 to 1,500 kilo calorie a day. That will help you to reduce your body weight, right? And when you combine with metformin, yeah, I mentioned just now, definitely this will even uh, further enhance your ability to uh, lose weight. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of time, all my patients, I will tell them, you have no choice, you must exercise. Yeah? You must exercise. It's a compulsory thing. No point for us to tell, teach you everything, but you don't want to control your weight, you don't want to control the way you eat. So, very difficult for us. Because, you know, sometimes by just doing, for example, brisk daily 20 minutes walks, yeah? will reduce your at least 70% 70 of your body weight. And a lot of time, from my experience, once you reduce your body weight by 2 kilo to 5 kilos, automatically your menses yeah, will return back to normal. So I think this is one of the, you know, if you, you feel that, uh, you know, you want to go for the most natural way to, you know, to, to tackle your PCOS problem, weight loss, Exercise is the best method, okay? Right, of course, like I mentioned just now, uh, you know, stress control is very important, right? Now, um, I'm sure there's, you know that there's 
now, especially we are locked down, we are so, so, so stressful, right? It will make your menses even worse. That's why you see a lot of, a lot of students when they have exam stress, they do have menses, right? Because actually when you have too much of stress, it will interfere with everything in your body. Your, your glucose, fat, amino acid production all will, will go haywire. And chronic stress will lead to, you know, your insulin level will increase. And this will trigger yeah, the onset of polycystic ovarian syndrome. So there are so many methods of, uh, you know, a lot of time we can't avoid stress in life, but we can control it, we can manage it. Yeah, one of the best ways, for example, I mentioned just now is exercise, right? Or meditations, or stretching, or make sure you have enough rest, right? Or enough sleep, yeah, okay? Or you do some hobby, you know, help to you know, reduce your stress. Okay, right. So, like I said just now, if you can control your stress, you can control your cortisol level, and you can improve your PCOS. I think I didn't mention I, I didn't mention about diet. Now we know that uh, beside weight loss, one of the things that you have to really really take care in PCOS patient is your diet. Make sure you go for high fiber diet. Because high fiber diet will reduce the absorption of sugar in your body, will reduce the insulin level in your body. And especially, you will take a lot of veggie and multi color veggie. That also will improve all the important nutrients and uh, minerals and vitamins that you will need uh, you know, to have a normal hormones level in your body. So go for high fiber diet, multi color veggie. Yeah, that's, and if possible, if possible, Stop your sugar and stop your carbo. Uh, so this is one of the way you can change your eating, eating habit together with exercise. And if you can do this too, a lot of time, uh, very naturally, your PCOS problem will be solved. Okay. And well, this is come to a topic that I like, uh, you know, tea and coffee, right? And we know that uh, moderate intake of caffeine actually help in increasing the insulin sensitivity. So, and then we know that uh, both tea and coffee contain antioxidants and definitely will help uh, in, you know, uh, reduce the risk of getting diabetes, heart disease and cancer. And this is especially what to mention about uh, green tea. Yeah? You know, green tea has been proven to increase uh, insulin uh, uh, resistance, right? They also reduce our, you know, some of the chemical substance in your body. Uh, we call it uh, chemo necrosis uh, factors, alpha. And this one actually is, you know, will, uh, this TNF alpha actually is a, a pro-inflammatory uh, chemical in the body. We can reduce it. Definitely, you can reduce risk of getting all the cardiovascular disease and cancer. So, and then we know that uh, green tea actually will help you also in increasing your uh, metabolism. In other words, increasing your ability to burn fat, right? So, yes, I will encourage you if you like to green, uh, if you like to drink tea, go for green tea, right? So, in other words, you see, we can uh, we just talk about diet, we talk about exercise, we talk about you know uh, drinking tea. These are a few natural methods that you can, you can practice easily to help yourself to control your PCOS. Of course, make sure you drink enough water, right? We know that in, uh, you know, what our body, yeah, 85% of our body is water. So make sure you drink enough water every day. And how about, you know, dietary supplements? I will mention, oh no, if you go through the list, there are so many, many, many minerals and vitamins that's helpful in PCOS. I will tell you a few that I usually use in my practice. Okay? Now, uh, number one that I always use in PCOS is chromium. Yeah, chromium. Now, from research, we know that chromium uh, actually uh, enhance a glucose metabolism. In other words, we know that patients on chromium will have lower sugar level in their, body, in their body. And with lower sugar level, definitely the insulin will become lower. And also because of that, then 
the risk of getting cardiovascular disease yeah, also will be lower. And chromium also has been found to reduce depressions. So these are one of the supplements that uh, we encourage patients to take. The recommended dosage is about 200 to 1,000 uh, microgram. Okay, so and it's not expensive. Chromium is not super expensive. If you really don't want to buy the supplement to eat, what you can get chromium is from all the seeds, uh, all the nuts like brazil nuts, almond nuts, flax seed. All these are contain high chromium, uh, you know, uh, food. Another thing that I always ask uh, my patient to take, uh, and uh, especially women, is magnesium, right? And from research, we know that uh, a lot of women with PCOS have very low magnesium in their body, right? And we know that by giving them, uh, you know, uh, magnesium will, will help or will improve their glucose uptake in their body. In other words, the glucose level in the circulation will be lower. And because of that, automatically your insulin level will be lower. And actually, uh, Magnesium not only uh, improve your you know, glucose, insulin, and PCOS, we found that magnesium is very, very useful in any patients with especially uh, you know, uh, premenstrual tensions or any uh, uh, discomfort uh, you know, during your menstrual cycle. And we know that by taking magnesium, actually a lot of this pain and discomfort will disappear. So I will strongly encourage uh, you know, all the women to take uh, to, to, to take some magnesium to improve their menstrual cycle, to improve their PCOS, to improve their diabetes, to improve their insulin resistance, and also to reduce the risk of getting any uh, heart disease or diabetes. And one of the things that uh, you know, I think everybody knows uh, about vitamin D. Eh? Vitamin D is free. Eh? You get it from sun. But surprisingly, uh, vitamin D uh, deficiency is very, very common, especially in Malaysia. Even though we live in a tropical country, uh, you you find that uh, up to uh, uh, 80 to 90 percent of our population actually very low vitamin D. Why? Because all Malaysians uh, are scared of the sun. Whenever we go out, we we will use umbrella to protect ourselves, or whatever reason you expose to sun, you apply sunblock. Whenever you apply sunblock, you block off the vitamin D productions. And we know that vitamin D is very important because it will help uh, reduce your uh, insulin resistance. Right? And uh, vitamin D also, together with magnesium, are very, very useful supplements to regulate menstrual cycle. And the problem is vitamin D, uh, you will buy it from the pharmacy, you don't get the enough dosage. We usually recommend patients to take up to 2,000 to 5,000 international unit of vitamin D a day. So a lot of time, uh, they are not getting enough. That's why we encourage uh, patients to uh, come to see us to make sure you get your uh, correct dosage of vitamin D uh, daily. Okay. And one thing that, uh, uh, that uh, very, very useful that I always encourage my patient with PCOS to take is an acetacid thing, or in other words, in the normal uh, short form, we call it NAC. NAC is actually one kind of uh, sulfur containing amino acid. And we know that uh, by uh, taking NAC, actually NAC uh, is like a, it's a very strong antioxidant. Actually, it's protect the liver, right? And it's, and it's all uh, reduce the insulin resistance and improve fertility. From research, when we use NSC together with chlorine, NSC together with metformin, consistently the data show that this NSC together with metformin or together with chlorine, they can work hand in hand and the result, the improvement is, is even better for the patients. Now this one, uh, you know, is, is extracts, huh? uh, white uh, peony roots. Um, Chinese, I'm not, I'm not sure what is that. Uh, Mutan, I, I can't, uh, I'm not sure what is that. I, I personally don't never use it, but this is mentioned quite regularly in the literature. Uh, you know, it's one kind of Chinese herbs and it actually can increase the progesterone and reduce testosterone. That's why sometimes a lot of patients will ask me, you know, 
uh, can I take some Chinese herbs to you know to to help myself whether uh, you know uh, well Chinese herb is useful or not? But actually, you ask me, I I do believe all these uh, rules or Chinese herbs do helpful, right? Um, especially those been using uh, you know for many 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 years. But how it works, we are you know uh, how much is enough? Uh, we are not so sure because you know usually the Chinese herb they make, you know they use it to make soup or things like that, right? Uh, but many of them are very helpful. Uh, just that we don't exactly know a lot of time we don't exactly know the mechanism and we don't exactly know how much is needed. But uh, I believe it's definitely helpful. Okay, another one is cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon. Okay, and. Uh, uh, you know the 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 yellow ginger, right? Right. The uh, yeah, cinnamon. Cinnamon also show to have uh, you know improve uh, you know glucose utilizations and increase insulin receptor sensitivity, and all this uh, you know you can use it in your daily life in your cooking, or you can buy the powder and incorporate into your drink. Uh, okay, this and all will be very very helpful to improve your uh, you know. Uh, PCOS. Okay, now, uh, so, um, and sometimes, you know, when I see this one called vitamin B, eh, and uh, we know that if you are on, uh, you know, uh, vitamin B, watch out that you don't take high dose niacin because that can worsen the insulin resistance. Okay, now, so in other words, you look at this, uh, you know, in, in, as a summary, uh, any PCOS come to see me after assessing, after checking the blood, after ultrasound and confirm their PCOS, usually our approach uh, is the most important person in the management is your, uh, you know, the patient themselves. So in other words, no point for me to do a lot of things, but the patient is not involved. So that's why usually when you come to see us, we will always, always spend time talk, talk to them regarding the importance of changing their diet, right? Important of uh, exercising, important of losing their weight. And in my approach, usually I use a lot of metformin. I usually start them on, uh, you know, low dose of metformin first because sometimes metformin do cause a bit of diarrhea and some upset. So we usually we start with metformin, okay? And a lot of time depends on uh, what are the patient's requirement. And other supplements that I routinely use together with metformin is uh, like NAC and magnesium. And of course, uh, a bit of vitamin D, right? And depends on what the patient's requirement is. If she has a lot of acne problems, maybe a short course of uh, diet 35. Or if the patient is very keen to get pregnant, right? Then a lot of time I will start to ovulate, uh, start them ovulation induction for them. And a lot of time, all depends on the age as well. If let's say the patient is PCOS, but she already reached a certain age, for example, more than thirty-five years old, right? Then uh, my approach will be different because if she's keen to get pregnant, then I know that the age is catching up then I usually will encourage her to start on the, you know, the treatment like metformin, weight loss and things like that, but maybe I will straight away refer her to, to IVF. Right. So the treatment, there's no one uh, so-called standard treatment for all PCOS patients because all PCOS patients uh, behave differently and their uh, conditions uh, may react differently. So, but you must understand, uh, you must always let the patient understand that PCOS is a condition that will affect your, you lifelong. You know, like young, when you're younger, maybe you know, your menses problem is the one that's troubling you. And then later, maybe you know, uh, ability to get pregnant is troubling you. Uh, then later, of course, we are more worried about, uh, about diabetes, about hypertension, about heart disease. Uh, these are the things so we have to follow them up. Uh, you know? In other words, PCOS patients usually we follow them up lifelong, okay? And uh, patient must understand, for example, 
you have PCOS, you come to see us, we start your treatment, then you improve, you get better, you get pregnant, you blah, 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 you know. But it doesn't mean that your disease disappear. You know, along the way, you don't be careful, or you have faced some certain problems, for example, like stress, or suddenly your body weight increase again, then you can trigger the PCOS to become prominent again. So in other words, the treatment for PCOS is lifelong. You cannot just stop uh, in after the treatment, then you just stop. You know? So you have to do, uh, you know, in other words, I always tell my patient, yes, maintain your, you know, the, the, your, your exercise, maintain your weight loss, uh, you maintain your uh, healthy eating, then you will be okay. So, okay, I think that's it about my sharing about PCOS. If you have any questions, you can always ask me. Thank you very much. I pass it to, back to you, Farah. So if there's no questions, then I will end the session. Uh, is it okay, Farah? Yes, yes, you may end it. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.